Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We've been reading in the book of Leviticus. Last time we read Leviticus chapter 16, which was about the law of atonement. And now we're ready to read chapter 17. I am reading in the Amplified Bible. This is Leviticus chapter 17. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons and all the children of Israel, and say to them, This is what the Lord has commanded, saying, Any man from the house of Israel who kills an ox or lamb or goat in the camp, or kills it outside the camp, and has not brought it to the doorway of the tent of meeting, to offer it as an offering to the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord, That man shall be guilty of bloodshed. He has shed blood and shall be cut off from his people, excluding him from the atonement made for them. This is so that the sons of Israel may bring their sacrifices, which they were sacrificing to idols in the open field where they killed them, that they may bring them in to the Lord at the doorway of the tent of meeting to the priest and sacrifice them as sacrifices of peace offerings to the Lord. The priest shall sprinkle the blood on the altar of the Lord at the doorway of the tent of meeting, and offer the fat up in smoke as a sweet and soothing aroma to the Lord. So they shall no longer offer their sacrifices to goat idols or demons or field spirits with which they have played the prostitute. This shall be a permanent statute for them throughout their generations. Then you shall say to them, Any man from the house of Israel or any of the strangers living temporarily among you who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice and does not bring it to the doorway of the tent of meeting to offer it to the Lord shall be cut off from his people excluding him from the atonement made for them. Any man from the house of Israel, or any stranger living temporarily among you, who eats any blood against that person, I shall set my face, and I will cut him off from his people, excluding him from the atonement made for them. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement, by reason of the life which it represents. Therefore I have said to the sons of Israel, No person among you may eat blood, nor may any stranger living temporarily among you eat blood. So when any Israelite or any stranger living temporarily among them catches any ceremonially clean animal or bird when hunting, he shall pour out its blood and cover it with earth. For in regard to the life of all flesh, its blood is the same as its life. Therefore I said to the Israelites, You are not to eat the blood of any flesh, for the life of all flesh is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off, excluding him from the atonement made for them. Every person who eats an animal which dies of natural causes, or was torn by a predator, whether he is native-born or a stranger, he shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be ceremonially unclean until evening. Then he will become clean. But if he does not wash his clothes or bathe his body, he shall bear his guilt, for it will not be borne by the sacrifice of atonement. So that is the end of Leviticus chapter 17. It's interesting to note that when they were killing things in the field or when they were, and see how this is said here, let me see if I can get this correct so that the sons of Israel may bring their sacrifices, which they were sacrificing to idols in the open field. And he's saying, so they shall no longer offer their sacrifices to goat idols or demons or field spirits. So they must have been doing some of these things which were incorrect. And maybe these were um, 
traditions and things that they had been doing back in Egypt. Maybe that's how things were done there. They had a, the Egyptians had a whole pantheon of gods for different things. So it could be that they were still carrying some of these practices and traditions with them. And God is telling them they, they are not to do that. They are not to make these offerings to other gods out in the field or, or field spirits or whatever they were doing. You know, and he's given them an alternative to doing that so that they can have that atonement and be in a right relationship with him. You know, it's also interesting what the Lord says here about the blood. He says several things about it. Blood is the life of all flesh. So it is the blood. It is the same as the life. It is what keeps our bodies alive and keeps our bodies moving and functioning. So it's very interesting that that is mentioned here. It's something that that way back when they didn't realize that in a medical sense. But now in a medical sense, we we know that. And then, too, you'll notice that it's, it's interesting that uh, in, if you look at verse 11, for it is the blood that makes atonement by reason of the life it repre- which it represents, which means that when, when they're using blood to make atonement in these sacrifices, they're actually giving life. So that was the idea. They were, they were giving up life to pay for their sins to make atonement. And that's why. You know, when Jesus did his one eternal sacrifice, that's what his blood does. It, it, it was where he gave up his life to make that one eternal atonement for all of us. So it's just interesting to see that and realize that what they were doing there was a representation, a smaller, lesser version of what Jesus was going to do on the cross. That is Leviticus chapter 17. I want to thank you for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless you and keep you safe. And remember, God loves you.